The Best of Living in Iowa is funded in part by the Gilchrist Foundation. Founded by Jocelyn Gilchrist, furthering the philanthropic interests of the Gilchrist family in wildlife and conservation, the arts and public broadcasting, and disaster relief. Funding for this program was provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. Generations of families and friends who feel passionate about the programs they watch on Iowa Public Television. Hello, this is Morgan Halgren. For 16 seasons, Living in Iowa told the tale of what it means to be uniquely Iowan. Tonight, we honor that spirit by bringing you another glimpse into our rich heritage with a few stories from our archives. In this episode of The Best of Living in Iowa, we'll revisit our tribute to territory bands that brought music and dancing to several Iowa communities during the 1930s and 40s. Good evening, I'm Morgan Halgren. Thanks for joining us tonight. Iowans in the 30s and 40s had lots of opportunities to dance the night away at their local ballroom, thanks to the territory bands of that era. These little recognized bands traveled hundreds of miles and played a demanding schedule to bring their magic to Iowans' favorite ballrooms. The Surf in Clear Lake, the Valair in West Des Moines, the Peony Park in Omaha, the Call in Davenport, and the Arcota Ballroom in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. This program originally aired as a festival special in 1993, but tonight we'd like to dedicate it to the late Lee Barron, whose book Odyssey of the Midnight Flyer served as the basis for this program. With that in mind, it's time to grab your partner and start dancing. In the 1930s and 40s, everyone danced to the popular music of the day called modern music. See at the dance became a parting expression for young adults who socialized at the thousands of well-attended ballrooms around the Midwest. Children learned the rudiments of social dancing in physical education classes. Preferring not to be embarrassed at the weekly dance, some boys sought additional lessons in the living room from a sister or mom. Many young men and women went to dances as singles and congregated on one side of the ballroom. Girls waited to be asked, may I have this dance? And recorded the invitations on a dance card. Band leaders carefully chose danceable Latin and foxtrot rhythms. On most nights, a crowded floor meant couples moved their feet while practically dancing in place. For some of you, this glimpse of a ballroom adventure is intended as a jog down memory lane. Now over KMHK from the Corn Palace here in Mitchell, it's the music of Lee Barron and his group. If anybody ever wrote a book about the big bands on the road, nobody would believe it. But that's exactly what Lee Barron did. His history of Midwest bands, called Odyssey of the Midnight Flyer, profiles hundreds of the so-called territory bands that were unique to the Midwest. Who would believe that some bands had sleeper buses that traveled up to 600 miles to play another dance in another town almost every night of the year? We would hardly have time to stop and eat. We'd just barely pull into the next spot in time to unpack and get into our uniforms and start playing the job uh, on the designated time. Lee's band played in every small town that had a dance floor. The band did well financially in rural areas as folks from miles around would pack the dance floor eager to hear a good territory band. But Lee particularly enjoyed playing in the large, beautiful ballrooms like Peony Park in Omaha. And in the summer, they had what they called the Royal Grove. This was a beautiful deal where they dance under the stars in a grove of trees with a lot of tables and chairs. Tremendous crowds out there. Paul Moorhead was a well-known band leader in the Omaha area. After he passed away in 1982, Lou Arnold acquired his musical arrangements and enjoys reviving Paul's distinctive sound with help from a Celeste. Lee 
Barron's sleeper bus, the Midnight Flyer, had a special compartment for the girl singer, and he insisted that she be treated with respect. No obscenities, profanity, and so on and so forth, and uh, for the most part, the boys on the band played according to the rules. If you had the right girl singer that knew how to sing well and uh, entertain, she was worth her weight in gold. So I sing you to sleep after the loving with a song I just wrote yesterday. And I hope you can hear what the words and the music have to say. Why were we in a band? It was because we had a consuming desire to be a member of a dance band, and a good one. Our wives and sweethearts were back home or in some other town. Uh, the problems with the laundry that never seemed to catch up with us, the tire problems, the motor troubles, and so on and so forth. Once we hit that first tune, then we forgot about all of our problems. Lee feels that it was the territory bands, even more than the big name bands, that contributed to the success of the great ballrooms. The constant demand for dance music could only have been met by the amazing number of territory bands. When you wanted to liven up that crowd, all you had to do was swing in with a tune like the one o'clock jump, Woodchopper's Ball, and I'll tell you, they'd all be out there dancing and jitterbugging. The most entertaining dance of all time. The jitterbug. We just loved it. Another territory band veteran is Bob Wiest, the leader of Bob Wiest and his Swing and Big Band, seen here at the Valair Ballroom in West Des Moines. The Valair was one of a chain of ballrooms known as the Archer Circuit. The late Tom and Francis Archer had a dozen ballrooms around the Midwest, and playing the Archer Circuit kept some bands in business. Even Lawrence Welk allegedly slept in the Valair office when he couldn't afford a hotel room. And one person on the sleeper bus, he would get in the bus and go to sleep. This could be like at 3 in the morning and sleep all day long. Uh, we might arrive at the job location around 7 in the evening, go to a gas station, clean up, and get dressed, play the job, and then go downtown, would eat, and maybe at 2 in the morning he'd climb back in the sack and sleep all day long again. He did that night after night. When you're young, you know, you can put up with all these things. The result of all your practice and work, you're able to go out and perform. For young people, that's exciting. Musicians were either 4F or too young to enlist. Bob Wiest began his professional career at age 14 in 1944 at a gambling joint in Milwaukee. A couple of years later, Bob was on the road playing six and seven nights a week and traveling as far as 600 miles between engagements. During the war, we couldn't get good tires. We planned a blowout every day. We barely would make it sometimes from one job to the other. On one band, Wilson Humber's band, we would wear cardboard dickies. A little cardboard dicky that looked like a shirt. If you take your coat off, you don't have any shirt on. And to get the most mileage out of them, we'd get an eraser off a pencil and just erase the dirt. Retired dentist Wayne Lage served his country during World War II by playing in the Navy band. For one year between the service and college, he traveled the sleeper bus route. There were booking agencies, and they would line you up as close together town-wise as they could. 
They were often accused of throwing darts at the map, however. Uh, Grand Forks, North Dakota to Lincoln, Nebraska is quite a long stretch. There were some very good territory bands. I always felt that uh, we were doing a service to people who normally would not have the opportunity to watch a, a big band. A little town in North Dakota had the most beautiful women. I tell you, every girl was just, just a doll. Yeah, every town had good dancers. They really did. Hi, I'm Terry Hale. Hope you enjoy this look back at territory bands from the 30s and 40s as part of our celebration of the best of living in Iowa. We have a special guest in our studio with us that some of you will recognize. Hunter Firsty knows a lot about those bands because he has one today, the American Vintage Orchestra. What do you think of this show so far? Fabulous show. It brings back, living in Iowa, it brings back what things were like 60, 70 years ago. And while we all know Tommy Dorsey and Glenn Miller and all the great bands that traveled across this country. Iowa had its own group of really great bands that did a lot of the heavy lifting and the night to night playing of all the great ballrooms across Iowa. And isn't it wonderful that we have a chance to look back at these archival footage of those bands that otherwise we wouldn't even be able to see them. I thought the show was fascinating. I haven't seen these, this footage. I haven't seen it. And I think I've seen a lot, but I haven't <laughs> seen these. So it's, it's a great show to watch and it's a great, it's a great uh, trip down memory lane. And so this is an opportunity while Hunter's here for you to make a pledge of financial support to Iowa Public Television so we can continue bringing you stories that are about things that are uniquely Iowan. And when you do that, there's a way for you to enjoy Hunter Firsty and his orchestra live because he's putting on a dance. You can have, if you can invest $156 one time or $13 a month as a sustaining member, we will thank you with two tickets to Hunter Firsty and his American Vintage Orchestra and two tickets to a reception Sunday, May 19th at, of all places, the Surf Ballroom in Clear Lake. What an amazing venue for you to perform. We play there every year and it really is like walking back in time. They've redone it and it's really like it, what it was during the big band era when all the territory bands played there. And so it's a treat for me to do it every year and now to do it as part of this Living in Iowa series where people can come hear us live and come to a special reception. That'll be fun. And what you're seeing here is a concert that Hunter and his orchestra put on here at Iowa Public Television several years ago. So it gives you a bit of a glimpse of what you'll experience because you'll have the singers there. Is that right? Absolutely. We have a uh, male singer that's worked years with the Glenn Miller Orchestra. It goes out with the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra now, Brian Anthony, uh, Amy Dolan, who is the female singer. She's worked shows in Chicago, is a Dubuqueer. And she really tries to create what it sounded like, what Helen O'Connell sounded like with Jimmy Dorsey back then. Then I have a four-part group, like the modern heirs of the Pied Pipers, and they recreate exactly what their hits were, like Elmer's tune and, you know, and personality. So it's, it's fun. Oh, it sounds like fun. And you can be there if you pledge your support here to Iowa Public Television right now, 800-779-7000 or iptv.org. Hunter's going to stay with us so we can hear more about his amazing orchestra. But first, we're going to go over and hear something from Travis Graven. Hi, Travis. Hi, Terry. Uh, I love this music as well. I I grew up spending many nights watching Iowa Public Television, watching Lawrence Welk on the airwaves. And uh, this music is just, uh, you can't help but enjoy yourself, have fun, uh, it brings some joy, and as Hunter said, a uh, trip down memory lane, really, when we hear this music. And it's stuff that you've been enjoying for years and years and years. And we're telling it, uh, telling you stories that maybe you didn't know about before, right here as part of this uh, Living in Iowa special on Iowa Public Television. And that's something that Iowa Public Television can do that no other network can or will do, is bring you stories like this from our own communities, from your own backyard, 
and telling them in ways uh, that uh, you're not going to find elsewhere. That is part of our mission that is made possible because you and others like you recognize the value of that and have gone to the phones or logged online and support Iowa Public Television with your dollars. And that allows us to invest that money in creating programs like this over the years, like Living in Iowa and so many of our current programs. And we can go out and acquire other programs that uh, are loved and enjoyed by so many people across the Iowa Public Television viewing area. Uh, if you value that, if you think that's important, we would love for you to uh, go to the phone or log online right now and make that financial investment in Iowa Public Television. And again, we have that fantastic opportunity for you to go to the Surf Ballroom on Sunday, May 19th, and hear Hunter Furstian and his uh, American Vintage Orchestra uh, at the Surf Ballroom, 6 p.m. You'll get two tickets um, to the show, plus two uh, tickets to the reception prior to the show, a one-time gift of $156, just $13 ongoing as a sustaining member. We can also send you just two tickets uh, to the dance, and that's a one-time gift of $120, just $10 a month ongoing. And again, Hunter Firstie and his American Vintage Orchestra um, kind of recreating the big band era feel at the Surf Ballroom and so many of those uh, classic bands and, and uh, well-known artists that you know, that Glenn Miller, Jimmy, Tommy Dorsey, um, so many others over uh, over the years. Uh, there'll also be the Penthouse Serenaders vocal group. There'll be a little trivia contest. And of course, you'll want to bring your dance shoes as well. There'll be a friendly little dance contest uh, there at the Surf Ballroom. So such a fun event. And you can be part of it with your support of Iowa Public Television right now. We also have uh, a book, which is, uh, it's more than 400 pages. Uh, it's a hefty book of Iowa culture, the past and present. Lots of information and photographs in here from uh, art centers, museums, historical places of interest across the state. The Surf Ballroom is featured in this book. Again, a one-time gift of $84, just 70, or $7 ongoing monthly. And with a gift of $60 or just $5 ongoing monthly, we have a tote bag for you to carry your dance shoes in. Uh, and that features the Living in Iowa logo. Again, just a few ways that we can say thank you for your support of Iowa Public Television. Another benefit of your membership with Iowa Public Television is IPTV Passport. And with any gift, $5 or more per month as a sustaining member or one-time gift of $60 or more, you will have access to IPTV Passport, more than 1,000 hours of some of your favorite IPTV programs, and you'll have access to watch them anytime, anywhere on your smartphone, phone, on your computer, or on your TV through Apple TV or Roku or your Amazon Fire. Uh, so many different ways for you to enjoy the programming at your convenience. And again, our way of saying thank you for supporting Iowa Public Television and for supporting programming like Living in Iowa that's telling the stories of these territory bands and taking us back so many years and uh, bringing back memories that are so rich for many of you and many of us. And we thank you so much for your support, Terry. And how wonderful to be able to experience some of what those territory bands and those dancers experienced way back then. Right now, if you pledge your support and you go to see Hunter Firsty and his very authentic orchestra in May, and you don't have to be a dancer to enjoy this though, right? No, Terry, you can, you can dance if you want. And a lot of people just sit and listen to the music because it's such enjoyable music. And they remember <laughs> <laughs> the, when those tunes came out, they know more about it than I do, so I have to watch out what I say, <laughs> but it's fun. Well, and you don't have to, uh, as you said, be a dancer, but you can certainly enjoy watching the dancers. Oh, I yeah. used to go with some friends of the family who were dancers, and it, it, you could just sit there and watch it all night. Yeah, some of them are so polished, and they've been doing it for years, and I have to get the temples just right, or I'll hear about it, and they're really good. It's, it's just something to, it's fun to watch the band, it's fun to watch the dancers, too. Well, you know, and uh, we're listening to some of your music right now, I think. Yeah. And as you see the video of Hunter's Orchestra as we've looked at it, it is very authentic, right down to the microphones, right? Uh, it's an RCA 44BX microphone. 
And you'll notice there's only one in front of the band. We have one on the piano that's real soft and one in front of the saxophone. I want it to sound like it sounded in 1938, with all, without all the heavy mics, without 20 mics on the drum. This is what it's gonna sound like if you went out and saw a band 70 years ago. And the jackets that everybody's wearing, those are authentic. Those are shawl collar jackets mm -hmm. that were made at a studio in Los Angeles, in Hollywood. And it, we, we researched this and wanted to look exactly like a band looked back then. Well, and you do, and you could be there to experience it if you give us a call here at Iowa Public Television. We're going to go back now to the territory bands as this tribute continues to the best of living in Iowa. We thank you so much for your generous support. Enjoy. We'll continue our musical journey now with more nostalgic pictures, tunes, and interviews with former band members. There must be thousands of Iowans who remember names like Kenny Hofer, Kenny Paulson, and Eddie Skeets. But they probably never gave a thought to the rigors of playing a different town every night. Life on the road could have been boring, but band members found lots of ways to keep things interesting. As Lee Barron's band made its way to the surf ballroom in Clear Lake one day, the young musicians in back aimed their water pistols at a lady passenger in a passing auto, who promptly fainted. The driver pulls up ahead of us, revives her, gets out, and he starts to chew me out, wants me to stop in the next town, have a citizen's arrest. That story had a happier ending than the legend of the first surf ballroom. Named for its proximity to Clear Lake's shoreline, the surf burned down in 1947. It was rebuilt across the road and opened just over a year later. A wall of photos reveals a rich history of music. The legacy of the Kenny Hofer Orchestra dates back to the big band era, but they play another popular style of the day, country western swing. band began playing on New Year's Eve of 1941. With World War II just underway, that dance was intended to be the first and last performance. Somehow the band managed to keep good musicians throughout the war and has endured to this day. The band survived the war and Kenny's death in 1986. Now his wife Maxine and son Tom carry on the family tradition. I knew he had to entertain the people, that's what his life was. And so I let him do it. I'd always wait up for him. And that was like 3 in the morning when he'd get home. And then he would probably sleep till 10 o'clock and then go down to the radio station to be on the air. Six years on TV and about 25 years on, on radio. Maxine doesn't know where Kenny got his energy. One of his date books from 1946 showed that he played 350 dates in addition to radio and TV broadcasts. And over a 15-year period, a bright yellow Cadillac towing a trailer logged over a half a million miles. Tom began playing with the band at age 12. And as all the kids grew up, Maxine decided to give it a whirl. Kenny said when I started, well, you can uh, try it one year. And if you don't like playing keyboard and being out, then you can quit. And he knew that I would get hooked. There's a surprising similarity between many of the big band and country dance steps. For example, the foxtrot is the same basic step as the Texas two-step. We also do, you know, some big band tunes, a little bit of old time, polkas, waltzes, that type of thing. Main thing is they've got to have the good dance tempo because we feel that we are playing to the dancers. If that was 40 years ago, there'd be eight, nine hundred people here, or a thousand. And that was wonderful. There were so many, many ballrooms and community buildings that held dances. And now there just aren't 
any ballrooms around. Just very, very few. To help ensure the continuation of dance halls, Maxine and Tom own and operate Hofer's Dance Land in Walford, Iowa, near Cedar Rapids. Most musicians have to work another job, and so it gets rough sometimes. A lot of musicians will decide, well, I've had enough, I'm gonna retire. Most of them last about six months and they're back playing. to make people or have them have fun with the tunes we play. There was a beautiful girl over in Davenport when we played the Coliseum one night, and it uh, wasn't long before uh, the trumpet player was chatting with her in front of the bandstand, and the next thing I know, why he's taking her out for a little smooching during intermission. There was another guy waiting, and that was her husband. So as a result, our uh, trumpet man winds up with a broken nose. The Col, that's short for Coliseum, like many great ballrooms, burned down and was rebuilt. In 1914, three partners in the plumbing business built the Col with a paving brick exterior. Many well-known big bands performed here for spirited audiences. The bread and butter, of course, of the business was the territory bands. See, the name bands played maybe once or twice a month, the territory bands played here two or three times a week. In 1936, Don Watchell hitched up with a prominent country band from Cedar Rapids called Tom Owens Cowboys. They could be heard six days a week on WMT radio and played seven nights a week in a circuit that included the call every other Thursday night. The Cowboys were booked at least a year or two in advance. Through his contact with the band, Don later purchased the ballroom. When you're young, enjoying playing in a band and making money at the same time, when you play seven nights a week, you know, you've got to have something going. And the crowds were responding. It was great. It was a great year. Just wonderful. Back in those days, the whole family would go to the dance together. And you'd see mother dancing with the son and the father dancing with the little daughter. And about intermission, they would get tired and we'd spread our coats on the stage and the kids would go to sleep right while we was playing. It, it was quite a thing. One summer, while still in high school, Don tasted life on the road during the Great Depression. Toured Wyoming, South Dakota, Utah, and Idaho. And at one time, we were down to one quart of cherries and about three or four loaves of bread that the ballroom manager's wife gave us to eat. This is back in the height of the Depression. Our last job was in Rigby, Idaho. We made $100. He paid us in silver dollars, believe it or not. I can still see the bass player coming across the floor. He had the $100 in his, in his suit pockets. We had fun. The crowd was having fun. And uh, the fact that we played seven nights a week didn't bother us a bit. Every place you played was a different crowd, a different uh, atmosphere. I have a great respect for Eddie Skeets. Uh, he has always been uh, the leader of what I would call an excellent Midwestern band. He's one of the very few band leaders, maybe the only one, that has been in the business for uh, about 55 consecutive years. with modern and country groups, polka bands also flourished as territory bands in the Midwest. 
Eddie brings his blend of dance music to the ballroom, once known as the Arcota in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. His band didn't use a sleeper bus, but traveled just far enough to return home almost every night. Raised in Pennsylvania, Eddie was impressed by Midwest hospitality. They'd invite the whole band for supper, you know. And all the boys would sit down and eat, you know. And then after that, we'd go to the job, we couldn't even blow a note, because <laughs> we'd be fed so much, you know. We have many, many friends, many, many friends. We had a tune that really sold. I remember we called it the Mambo Polka, but something different. That's how come Downbeat got us on our list through that recording, see? Being a territory band in the Midwest, I enjoy it. Because in the Midwest, that's where ballrooms are, and that's where dancers are. People love to dance in the Midwest. performed via radio, but the announcer had difficulty pronouncing Eddie's real name, Edward Ed Washanowski. He says, I can't pronounce that on the air. He says, what's your nickname? So I said, well, my nickname is Ski. He said, hey, we just call you Skeets. And from that point on, I became Skeets. Another name Eddie goes by is Pop, a term of endearment from the younger members of the band. Nationally recognized jazz trumpet player Ryan Kaiser played with the band while in junior high school. Now, his younger brother, Justin, called me up. And he says, Papa Skeets, he says, how about me playing trumpet? And I said, well, you're going to be all right? I said, come on. And I got in here today. Eddie is willing to give budding musicians a chance to play with the band. Even his young grandson is eager to join in. He keeps telling me, Grandpa, hang on, because I'm going to be ready. You come to a dance and dance one night, and you'll dance five miles. And it's a good aerobics, and you're dancing with a partner, and you enjoy yourself. He deserves a real pat on the back for helping keep the music of the big bands alive to the best of his ability. The Midwest Territory bands were the heart and soul of big band music during the 30s and 40s. At the time, the musicians probably didn't realize that thousands of dancers depended on them to inspire the familiar words, see you at the dance. The Best of Living in Iowa is funded in part by the Gilchrist Foundation. Founded by Jocelyn Gilchrist, furthering the philanthropic interests of the Gilchrist family in wildlife and conservation, the arts and public broadcasting, and disaster relief. Funding for this program was provided by Friends, the Iowa Public Television Foundation. Generations of families and friends who feel passionate about the programs they watch on Iowa Public Television. And we hope we'll see you at the dance, the dance that Hunter Furstie and his American Vintage Orchestra is putting on in May at the Surf Ballroom in Clear Lake. I'm Terry Hale, and I'm here with this extraordinary band leader right now who's going to be putting on that dance and offering you an opportunity to support Iowa Public Television and celebrate the best of living in Iowa, celebrate the history about territory bands, and then make it possible for you to enjoy a very authentic vintage band, that's Hunter's band, in person in Clear Lake. 
Clear Lake. So give us a call right now and pledge your support. And $13 a month as a sustaining member, a one-time gift of $156. You can have two tickets to Hunter and his American Vintage Orchestra and two tickets to a reception on Sunday, May 19th at the Surf Ballroom in Clear Lake. And that is going to be an unforgettable dance, isn't it? I am really looking forward to it. Because every time we go to the surf, you see all these dancers and people who appreciate the music that I appreciate. So it's really going to be a great time. And I think if you enjoyed the program on Living in Iowa, this is an extension of it. It's one thing, you see it on TV, and it's a wonderful program. Now you get to see it live. Mm -hmm. Because you have a very authentic vintage orchestra. You've gone to great pains to replicate everything you can about the bands in that era. And then the music itself. Tell us a little bit about that. The music is all the, the songs that were really big from 1936 to 1946, the big band era as we know it. And that music is not available. And I would get the original 78s, put it on a cassette, put it on a boombox, and then write a transcription of it, oh do all the arrangement. I want it to sound exactly like it sounded in 1940. So you really will be able to be transported back. And we were just seeing right now some video when Hunter's Orchestra performed right here at Iowa Public Television a few years ago to give you a bit of a taste of what you would experience in person if you give us a call and support outstanding programs like Living in Iowa, like everything you see here on Iowa Public Television with your gener generous investment. And we said it before, but you know, if you're like me and you love the music and you want to experience it, but you're not really a dancer, you're still welcome, right? It's fun to come out and just sit and listen. First of all, the Surf Ballroom is beautiful. Mm -hmm. They've renovated it in a retro style, so it looks like it did in 1940. Mm. And so it's fun just to see the ballroom and experience if you've never been there before. Then to come see the band in the jackets from 1940, the Shaw collars, and the original RCA 44 BX microphone. We're going back in time 70 years. That's really a, an unforgettable experience. And then also to be able to watch the people who can dance. Uh, they take such pride and they're so poised. And some of those dances are simple, but some of them are complicated. They're very good at that. And I'm in <laughs> awe because I cannot dance. <laughs> but the music that I provide for them is like the music you're hearing if you can't dance to that one, you're not one of these great dancers that are out there. They're wonderful, and it's great to watch. Plus, it's good to listen to, oh, so absolutely. it'll be a fun night. Absolutely, so hopefully you will be there. Give us a call right now at 800-779-7000. Invest in public television experiences like Living in Iowa, and then enjoy Hunter Firsty and his American Vintage Orchestra in person. Let's head over now and hear some more from Travis Graven. Hi, Travis. Hi, Terry, and this is a great example of what is fantastic and what is so treasured about Iowa Public Television. Living in Iowa for so many years, coming into our living rooms and sharing stories, your stories, our stories, those stories of our friends and families and uh, organizations and people and so many things going on across the state of Iowa in our communities and now with this special sharing the stories of these territory bands in a way that only Iowa Public Television and Living in Iowa uh, has done and will do and you are helping preserve that. Uh, music makes memories and we all have uh, memories of uh, concert experiences or dances. Maybe you were going to dances back in the 30s and 40s and you remember those days and uh, you're reliving those memories now here on Iowa Public Television. That is made possible because you and others like you have made a financial investment in Iowa Public Television and given us the resources to create programs like these so we can tell the stories, we can preserve this wonderful history of Iowa right here on this statewide network, Iowa Public television. When you do go to the phone right now or log online and make that financial contribution of support, we have some great ways that we can say thank you to you. Uh, beginning again with that uh, wonderful opportunity at the Surf Ballroom in Clear Lake on May 19th for you to see and hear and dance and uh, have all the fun with Hunter Firsty and his American Vintage Orchestra. Uh, again, uh, re kind of recreating the big band era um, with 
the wonderful music of Count Basie and Glenn Miller and so many others, uh, you'll have the opportunity to get out on the dance floor and uh, relive some of those memories and you'll be sharing that opportunity with so many other folks who love this music and who love Iowa Public Television as well. A one-time gift of $156 or $13 ongoing monthly and you'll have two tickets to that event uh, plus two tickets to a reception prior to the show. Now, if you just would like two tickets to the dance itself, we can do that for you with a gift of $120 one time or just $10 ongoing monthly as a sustaining member. And you can be there at the Surf Ballroom in Clear Lake on May 19th. We have a wonderful uh, book that is just filled with all kinds of information and history of Iowa culture, both past and present. Uh, One-time gift of $84 or just $7 ongoing monthly. And we'll send you this 400-page book. Uh, the Surf Ballroom is featured in here, as well as hotels and homes and opera houses, theaters, uh, so many historical points of interest from across the state. There are more than 2,200 photographs in this book. Just a wonderful resource and again a way for you to kind of look back and remember um, some of those uh, wonderful, uh, joyous, happy things that maybe you've experienced over the years. We also have a dance shoes tote bag, a one-time gift of $60 or $5 ongoing monthly and we'll send you this bag where you can uh, carry around your dance shoes and maybe take them with you to that event at the Surf Ballroom on a Sunday, May 19th, so you can uh, get out on the dance floor and have fun with so many um, folks there at that event. We want to thank you for your support, and one other way that we can do that is any uh, gift that you make $60 and above, we're gonna send you our friend's member card. That can be a card you can carry in your wallet or a smartphone app. And if you're heading to the Surf Ballroom, for instance, maybe you stop along the way and have dinner uh, or lunch and you can take advantage of some discounts by using your friend's member card. It's also good at cultural attractions, uh, greens fees, and so many other places across the Iowa Public Television viewing area. You can save a few dollars, and you'll have some pride when you pull out that member card or pull out that app and show your support of Iowa Public Television because you are helping make programming like this possible. And we certainly thank you for your support, Terry. We do, and you know, Hunter Firsties and his orchestra's concerts and dances sell out fast, so if you're interested in being at the big dance at the Surf in May, now would be the time to go to the phone and make that pledge of financial support. You're supporting public television. The tickets are a thank you gift. And part of the reason I'm sure they sell out is because it is so authentic, and your roots are actually with Guy Lombardo, is that right? Yeah, I worked in 1976 and 1977 with Guy Lombardo and his Royal Canadians, and I was 22 at the time. Oh my gosh. He did it every night of the year, probably 354 dates a year. We did, I did his last TV show on CBS at the Waldorf Astoria in New York, which was sold out. And I got a good experience because he had done it for 50 years, like oh Iowa Public gosh. Television, 50 year anniversary when I was on the band. And he had done it every night. And when I was 22, I go, how do you keep up this lifestyle? And then you watch the show on the territory bands. How do they do it? Yeah. They, well, how do you do it? Because you've got a day job in addition to this. I guess it's the passion for the music. You have to love it. And you can tell everyone in the band and the singers, they enjoy doing it. And it's back and forth when you see the audience sitting there enjoying it or they'll come up, hey, do you play my favorite tune? They'll come up to you. You'll see a couple celebrating their 50th anniversary and they met on the ballroom, oh dance gosh. floor at the surf, dancing. Oh such great stories and you could be there in person to enjoy it so give us a call 800-779-7000 now as part of our 50th anniversary celebration uh, we went back to the archives and uh, we did dig up as you see footage from Hunter Firstie and the American Vintage Orchestra performance the concert that was taped right here I think in 2005 and we're going to show you some of that right now so stay with us and enjoy a taste of Hunter Firsty and the American Vintage Orchestra as part of our 50th anniversary celebration here at Iowa Public Television. Live from the Glen Island Casino, the Mutual Radio Network presents Hunter Firsty and his American Vintage Orchestra.
Yes, it's the familiar theme of Hunter Firsty and his American Vintage Orchestra, coming to you live and direct from the Glen Island Casino on Shore Road in New Rochelle, New York, just 30 minutes from Times Square. Tonight's broadcast features Amy Dolan, the Penthouse Serenaders, the Lindy Hoppers, and the vocal stylings of Brian Anthony. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy our one-hour broadcast of Swing Out, the Big Band Show. Hunter begins tonight's broadcast with Glenn Miller's latest recorded success, Sun Valley Jump. On the trumpet, Gary Kurtz. Here's a song that featured a young Buddy Rich in 1941. It was done by the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra, and I think you'll recognize it, and I think you'll enjoy it. Here's Olin Franklin on Tommy Dorsey's Hawaiian War Chant.
and that was recorded right here where we're standing. The backdrop was a little bit different, but Hunter Firsty, I don't think you've changed a bit. What an exciting experience that must have been, and then to have this broadcast on statewide public television. It was really a good time. We came down here from Dubuque, we worked on the show, and we had a sold out studio audience, but then it went around to everyone in the state. Only on Iowa Public Television could you do that. I got more phone calls from that than any other thing I've played, and people watched it. And the thing about the TV show that's different than the CDs we record, other things record, is that was a live show. It went to tape, but you got it mistakes and all. <laughs> but that's how we sound, mm -hmm. and you'll get to hear it live up at the Surf Ballroom and coming up to that. So that'll be a real treat to do that. Absolutely, and so the way to do that, let me remind you, is if you call right now, 800-779-7000, and make a pledge of financial support, $13 a month as a sustaining member, or $156 one-time investment, will send you two tickets to enjoy the experience in full, mistakes and all, I don't doubt that anybody could spot them, with Hunter Firsty and his American Vintage Orchestra, and two tickets to a reception, Sunday, May 19th, at the Surf Ballroom, Clear Lake, it'll be in the evening. Mm -hmm. And that can be yours if you call right now, 800-779-7000, and you will see this stunning singer, That is that correct? Amy All Dolan. All the people we see here will be with you. Yes. Listen to that voice. How did you find these talents? I'm just very lucky that I knew a lot of people who were able to do it on this level. I like to do it on a professional level as if we were traveling across the country or doing TV shows recorded all the time like we do at Iowa Public Television. So I had to have really, really excellent musicians and people who could recreate the style of the time. So I'm, I consider myself quite lucky. Well, and we are lucky that you have done this to give us all a, an authentic taste of what it must have been like in the 30s and 40s and 50s yes. to experience not just the territory band, but really a big band experience in many ways, right? Exactly. We try to do a little bit of everything from maybe Tommy Dorsey or Artie Shaw, a little more swinging at the time, even to Guy Lombardo and, and Sammy Kay. A little bit of everything, and we'll give you a good variety when you come up to the surf ballroom. And you can be there by supporting the public television, the television place that actually devotes time in its schedule to something like a big band experience and a local big band that seems like a national big band. You do that with that call of uh, support. Travis Graven has been enjoying all of this as well, and he's got some other reasons for you to call right now. Hi, Travis. I hear some of these songs, I can just hear my grandma saying in my ear, gosh, I've danced a million miles to that song, as she uh, so often said. And some of you probably feel the same way uh, hearing some of this fantastic music and the importance of that being preserved and celebrated here on Iowa Public Television. Some of our viewers may not be able to get out to the dance floor anymore, but we're still able to bring you music and programs like this on Iowa Public Television because of your support and others like you around the Iowa Public Television viewing area who have made a financial contribution to make that possible. But those of you who are able to get out to the dance floor, we got a wonderful opportunity to tell you about. Uh, if you call right now or log online and make that financial investment in Iowa Public Television with a one-time gift of $156 or just $13 ongoing monthly, we're going to give you two tickets to uh, hear or dance to Hunter Firsty and his American Vintage Orchestra on Sunday, May 19th at the Surf Ballroom in Clear Lake. You're also going to get two tickets to a reception before the show, so you can be there a little bit early and have a little fun with uh, your friends and fellow Iowa Public Television supporters and then enjoy this wonderful music and dance the night away. We can send you just two tickets to the dance itself sell for a one-time gift of $120 or just $10 ongoing monthly. Again, that event at the Surf Ballroom in Clear Lake on Sunday, May 19th. Enjoy, uh, you know, some of that music of Len Miller, Count Basie, Tommy and Jimmy Dorsey. Uh, I'll have a little trivia contest. Who knows, there might even be a friendly little dance contest as well. What a fun, fun event for you to be part of and uh, uh, share your pride of Iowa Public Television with so many others as well. We thank you for your support, Terry. Absolutely, whether you're a dancer or not, to just be in 
the Surf Ballroom and to experience the 101st Orchestra, uh, I just don't know how you could really describe that experience. You just have to be there. It'll be a really good time that night, and I think we'll all have a great time. And be sure to come up and say hi to me. And if there's something you like, tell me, because we're going to go back in time 70 years. You're going to have a great time. So can people make requests? They can try. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another reason for you to go um, and to enjoy the incredible talent. And we want to thank you, Hunter. You know, Iowa Public Television is preserving the music from the past, but you have worked so hard to preserve that music with your orchestra. Thank you for doing that. You're very welcome. And we thank you for putting on this dance in order to help Iowa Public Television raise some money so that we can continue to preserve and showcase outstanding musical performances. Thank you for your generous support. And see you at the dance. Yeah.